What's up, kids and coaches? We are back with another gameplay breakdown for you guys today. We are going to talk about why pros dink to the middle of the court. So we're going to break this down here, the strategy of why we do it, and then we're going to jump out on the court and do it ourselves. And uh, without further ado, let's get this party started. All right, so here we are at the PPA Mesa. We have Tardio and Diascu versus Johnson and Fraser, and they're up at the kitchen line, and let's just watch... Uh, a few seconds here to start. One, two, three, Everyone's four, leaning five, in. six, seven. Okay, so then we got the first misdirection. So really quick, yeah. Cannon, um, something that I noticed also, and when we first started playing, or at least when I started playing, Cannon, one of the things that's uh, really interesting is that most of the dinks, or a lot of them were cross court. Yeah. Now in today's game, as the technology has gotten better and things are much faster with speed ups and things like that, why do you think the pros today are dinking middle a lot more often? Any thoughts? Well, first things first, off the bat, you guys already know this, it's the lowest part of the net, right? So um, a lot of these middle balls are just better off due to margin over that net, but also at the same time when things start to get crazy in points, it's usually going through the middle. So the angle dinks are gonna open things up and what all of these guys are doing here is they're actually kind of keeping that middle closed for offense. So um, that dink middle doesn't um, really open anything up to the sidelines or eventually open back up for pace in the middle. So that's, that's why, you know, personally, I like to dink middle and all four of these guys really kind of have a strategy and a pattern of going into the middle. Yeah, so as you can see this here, first dink here by Tardio really leaning in. And then again, this is coming to Dylan, he's leaning in. But just like Caden said, there's not a lot of angles that are open. Right. Um, and if someone is speeding up from the middle, it's really actually easy to cover the speed up, well, easier than if it was near the sideline because right. from the middle of the court, you really got to cover middle well. You can see here um, Tardio and Diascu kind of squeezing towards that center line because mm -hmm. uh, the speed up in this position, if Dylan chooses to speed up this ball out of the air, That'd it's going to be gonna, pretty dumb. It's got, well, it's got to come through the middle or their bodies. For so, sure. So we're seeing, again, a lot of middle balls, and we're going to continue this here. And then we finally see the first ball cross court. And I want you to see here JW as he goes out, he's near the sideline now, and he goes right back to the middle. Mm -hmm. um, and again, uh, this is one of the things that we're gonna be addressing when we hop back on the courts. But when you get pulled wide, uh, yes, you can go down the line, which we'll see in a second here, JW Johnson. And yes, here's the down the line shot. Mixes it up, but okay. then... Okay, and yes, you can go cross court, but mm -hmm. then when Andre pulls it out again, he decides to go middle again. So the middle is not only a great neutralizer uh, for um, to keep you, you know, in the point when you're getting pushed out wide, but it's also a good tactic to keep you in front of the ball. For sure. So that you can be ready for counters and things 100%. like that. 100%. 100%. So then we got a crazy hands battle. And uh, we got J-Dub and Dylan winning the point. Yeah. So everybody, uh, the middle is a, a true place. Again, I, I tell players this all the time. Uh, you tell me what you think about this, Gannon. Yeah. But when I, when I don't have a clear place to go, like one, you know, if I don't, ah, should I go to the forehand, to the backhand or anything? I'll just, you know, to play it safe. And if I don't have a strategy at that moment in time, I will keep it middle to be really safe. 100%. And Jordan said it perfectly, right? Like, it actually doesn't matter what shot you are hitting, whether you're back at the baseline or you're up at the kitchen line, neutral is always middle, right? You don't want to get in trouble and go for sidelines because that opens up the Ernie opportunities, right? And if you're out of position and you are going toward the sideline, the middle is still open for someone to possibly attack. But what all these four players do really well with their patterns of going middle is it allows them to keep that ball in front of them with their balance still intact. Um, so you can't really 
especially with all all these players, you can't just plow through them. So it really forces them to hit another ball and, and a safer ball with a dink instead of something a little bit crazier with a speed up, right? There you go. So, so middle is your friend. Don't forget it. Now we're going to hop on the court, show you some exercises that you can do and ways you could train this particular shot and do exactly what the pros do. Let's go. All right, we just talked about the middle dink and how important it is at, at higher levels. Uh, again, number one, the reason why it's very strategic to dink middle is when you are pulled out of position. So a lot of times Kaden and I could be playing a match and I get pulled out right here to my left, right? And I'm hitting a really wide ball outside my sideline. Uh, look where Kaden is at this point. His positioning is really close to that center line. So again, when I dink middle and I put it right in front of us pretty much, I could come right back here, Caden's in good position, I'm in good, good position, and there's not a lot of angles to attack from when the ball's in the middle, right? If they're gonna speed it up, obviously we got middle covered here, and then we kinda got our bodies covered. So that's the main reason, again, whether you're on the odd side or the even side, when you're in trouble, when you're off balance, when you feel like you are a little bit defensive, just dump it in the middle, and you'll find yourself winning a lot of points. Caden. Yeah, I also uh, like dinking middle a little bit more because we don't have the opportunity of getting Ernie'd on. Um, you know, you won't see this too often at lower levels, but 4-0 plus, uh, there are going to be players who are looking to Ernie either by being fully there, ready for it, or just by moving slightly to add a little bit of pressure to you. So if your mindset is to already dink middle, you don't even have to worry about whatever this person is doing on the sidelines to scare you. Um, we also dink middle because it's the lowest risk at the end of the day. There's no sideline to flirt with. Um, you're playing very safe in terms of the lowest part of the net. It's just a very safe option overall. And uh, I think you can benefit a lot from it just by putting more dinks in the middle of the court. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, more, at, more so at lower levels, but when you're dinking middle or in between those uh, opponents of yours obviously can cause some confusion there for and, sure and blind you know, dates are real yeah in the middle there and again uh, one thing that you said a long time ago came to me is like when you dink middle too it can it opens up the sidelines again because when you when you when you dink middle they have to come in someone has to hit that ball and then that's when we can actually hit that next ball in an angle and, and then spread them out wide again yeah so, perfectly uh, said yeah so now we're gonna show you just a simple drill that you can do uh, dink in middle, let's get to it. All right, there's many ways to practice this, but this is a very simple way. I'm going to be dinking kind of to Cadence inside foot to his right foot in the middle. And then when I pull him wide, he's going to be really disciplined. And what we just talked about, he's going to be dinking middle, trying to reset that ball. Okay, so here we go, Caden. Good, nice. Kaden. Oh, Ooh. yeah. All right, last two here. Here we go. So Kaden doesn't know when I'm going to pull it. I'm just going to stay here nice and easy. Stay here, middle. Good. Nice. Okay. All right. All right, well, this drill is a main reason of uh, why my shoes look the way they do with these holes. But uh, that being said, when I am working on this drill, if I feel like I'm not in a good position to send this ball back cross court, I will always look to go middle, all right? Um, obviously, yes, we like the cross court pattern, but if you're not in position to be fully offensive, this middle ball is a great spot for you, right? We're not going up the line getting ernie on. We're not trying to go all the way back cross court if we're not fully comfortable doing so. So this middle ball is a very safe dink. Um, it is your lowest risk in terms, but also highest percentage of success. So you should be utilizing this middle a lot more than you probably do. Anything, yeah. Jordan? That's it. Um, again, keep watching our videos. Comment below your thoughts on this. And we love we'll you guys. You we really do. The next video.